Hi, this is News Now, your community update and news show, and I'm your host, Frederick Rigolo. Today we have with us Franklin Tucker, the Belmontonian.com. Uh, hi, Franklin, how are you doing? Just fine, thank you very much. So today uh, we are starting with the Belmont schools that are ditching masks for some outdoor settings, but not for all. Can you explain more about that? Sure. It's uh, well, uh, as as you know, in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, the uh, state um, uh, has uh, been uh, relaxing a lot of the uh, COVID nineteen restrictions, and that including and that's including masks. Uh, they've opened up schools, and now inside uh, now um, there has been a relaxation of the masks that are, are at schools. Um, so at this time, adults and students will continue to wear masks inside. I mean that 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 has not uh, changed in any way, um, and 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 uh, students will continue to stay in their cohorts. Uh, um, they're one of two cohorts, but that may change uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, outdoor sports is where you're going to see most of the change. And outdoors, when uh, the when kids or I mean, I mean students are um, at lunch and places like that, that's when the masks will um, uh, be taken off. Um, uh, as you know, uh, ever since the um, uh, pandemic happened, uh, masks were uh, ordered for outdoor, outdoor activities. That has now changed. Uh, they will be asking that people still keep a, a distance, um, hand sanitize as best as possible. But um, from now on, if you if you go to a sporting event, and you will be able to go to a sporting event, um, uh, there's no restrictions on that. Uh, you can uh, uh, do it. Um, uh, uh, the, the students can do it uh, without masks. Uh, now, if you're an adult, you you are you will have to continue to wear a mask outdoors if this if distancing cannot be maintained. Okay. So there's That's changes. In that, that means that there is no uh, discrimination between vaccinated people and not. So there is no mention of vaccination in that uh, communication from the school, right? That's right, because it's um, we're we're all on the honor system um, in in the country right now. Um, you see it with stores that say, you know, you can if you're if you're vaccinated, you can come in. Well, you know, uh, in some parts of the country, people are not as back, uh, you know, have a low vaccination rate, and they still take off their masks. They just don't care. Um, while here in Massachusetts, as you can see with the uh, the COVID rates of vaccination. Uh, this, uh, we are at a great level. Uh, we're at a, a very high level. We're over 50% fully vaccinated and 66% of adults in Belmont have at least one shot, which really helps. So, and that's just going higher and higher. And we also know that students are, have received, are, are some of the biggest uh, fans of, of getting their shots. You know, many of them are going off to college or, you know, they just don't want to have any restrictions. So, you know, I've heard that the senior class at Belmont is somewhere at 80%, 90% vaccinated. So th those are great numbers. And so it will work better here uh, where you have a lot, where you have a very strong vaccination rate uh, rather than, so that's why they can say, um, we don't, we don't need to know if you've been vaccinated. We're going to, we're going to trust you that you have been. Yeah, yeah, and and for for the viewers, if you want to know more about the vaccination rate, you can watch the day as a weekly uh, update from the health department that we release on Friday on PMC channels and website. Um, and Frank and uh, last things about that topic. Um, this week they were a soft, softball game, I think, and the Belmont players had their mask on and not the other team, right? So I th he, 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 that is part of the reason why the Belmont Public School adapt to the new uh, rules, right? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's it's just that everybody wants to play in a, a competitively, and they feel that the, if they can take their mask off, they can feel much more like it's a regular game rather than they're under COVID uh, restrictions. And and the people who want to keep their mask on can. Oh yes, I mean that's something that uh, you know, and, and I think we hear that from the federal, state, and I hear and locally. Um, if you if you feel you want to keep your mask on, even if you are vaccinated, do so. You know because you know you still can transmit the disease, and so. Um, so uh, any, if you feel any kind of, uh, if you're squeamish in any way, um, do, uh, you know, keep your mask on. And, you know, there shouldn't be any kind of discrimination or any kind of uh, 
discrimination for uh, people who wear masks. Okay, good. Moving on to the next topic. So Patrice Garving, the town administrator, uh, since the first month she was in charge, she was good at finding a new grant that nobody will, were thinking of uh, before her. So, so, and she's still in that trend, right? Yes, exactly. Um, uh, not that uh, other uh, town administrators or people living in town government have been missing these. It's just she's very aggressive at it, and she's very good at finding this money. I mean, the first week she was here, the first weeks she was here in January of 2018, she received a thirty thousand uh, dollar community compact grant, and ever since then, she is just going to federal and state officials and. And if she hears of any money, and it, and it could be something like a traffic uh, study, she'll take it. You know, she's not, she doesn't discriminate in any way the type of money that she's going to get. And just recently, you know, she um, um, she announced that um, uh, that uh, she received, um, you know, she received, well, the town received three earmarks uh, from uh, working with State Senator um, uh, Rogers, State Representative Rogers, I should say, um, and those were one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for uh, redesigning the two intersections at Winter and Concord Avenue and Mill Street, uh, sixty thousand dollars for Rock Meadow, just infrastructure, and sixty thousand dollars to invest in IT equipment. So uh, now, what that does is it allows the town to take money that they were going to be putting into those uh, projects, whether it was capital budget or just regular uh, expenditures and save that money. So that money then can be put into um, uh, other, um, uh, you know, funding. Um, and uh, she also, uh, I think her biggest um, uh, net gain for the town was a, a $350 million uh, uh, grant. Now she's applied for it. She hasn't received it yet, but whenever, whenever our state, whenever um, a congressional uh, person gets these or accepts these, it does come out because everybody <laughs> in the country, Republicans and Democrats, want these infrastructure bills. And it would give uh, $3.5 million uh, to the construction of the community path. So, again, she's uh, just really found the money. And um, that's something that, you know, the state loves to hear because it's not going to come from state money. Um, so, you know, she's she's been doing it. And I think, you know, as... as um, the um, selectmen say, you know, uh, uh, as Adam Dash said, uh, who's the uh, uh, chair of the select board, the amount of money that you bring into town is astonishing. Don't ever stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. And especially with a, an override failed. Uh, that's right. That is almost, uh, it's, it's, it's even more important for the town. That's right. That's right. And even if there's a, uh, that $7.6 million um, in the, uh, um, American Rescue Act, um, uh, uh, even if we can use that. And, and next week, we'll know how much money. We'll pretty much know what we can do with that money. Uh, what the one thing we won't do with that money, and I think it's pretty evident, is that we won't be using it this year. You know, the cuts are going to be cut, and that money can be spread over three years. So we could see some uh, interesting ways of uh, pushing that uh, $7.6 million for uh, future uh, um, it will, you know, for future um, uh, budgets. Yeah, but uh, in the same time, uh, yesterday night at the um, uh, League of Women Voters uh, Warren briefing, uh, Laurie Slap, uh, no, no, uh, Laurie. That's Laurie Slap. Yeah, Laurie, uh, Laurie Slap. Slap. Sorry, uh, Laurie Slap. Uh, remind people uh, and town meeting members that we can count on one time found to found the structural deficit of the of the town. So, that's right. Re that's, that's right. Reoccurring. Well, when you have some, if you hire somebody, you need reoccurring funds to, you know, because that person can, you know, be for 20 years. So you should have that money already set out, you know, to, to, to hold that money. So, you know, um, so, yeah, one time funds, which which this act has given uh, should not be used for those um, uh, like uh, uh, for, for running the fire department or anything like that. It should be done for, um, you know, the purchase of like capital budget would be a great place to put it, where you purchase a, uh, a police car or a fire engine, something, a one-time good. That's something that can uh, be uh, done. But again, those are there's a restrictions on those that the federal government has placed. So it's going to be interesting to see how that $7.6 million is used over the next three years. Yeah. And can you tell more about the yesterday night meeting 
and what we can expect for the segment B of the town meeting? Yeah, like I always say that uh, segment B is, is for, for the last, oh God, uh, for most of the last decade, you could have called it uh, a segment boring because, you know, because it was a budget and uh, people just would, uh, just would approve it, you know, and it would, it would just go like, yes, we'll vote for that. Yes, we'll vote for that. But now what we saw at the Warren Committee, and that was just a, group, a small group of people uh, asking a lot of questions about the budget, which is a, which is a great thing. And, and, and town uh, officials uh, should know these answers. Um, some of the questions are a little off topic. You know, it's a, you can tell that these people are, this is the first time they're going to be asking questions about budgets. And this is something maybe, you know, if you're a, a long time uh, fan of uh, town meeting and the budget segment, um, you will know that uh, you'll know the answers and you'll say, hmm, maybe they should have known that question. <laughs> they should have known that answer. Um, but so I think it's going to be a longer meeting. I think it's, um, you know, I don't think, I think you're going to see a lot of questions, but I doubt you'll see somebody try to uh, uh, organize a, uh, a no vote for the budget. That would be very difficult for the town, uh, especially when you're thinking that it's going to come less than a month from July 1st, which is the uh, the uh, uh, beginning of the fiscal year. So um, while there, you know, while maybe there are people who will say. Why are we spending thirty-five thousand um, uh, dollars on the community uh, on uh, Peace and Park uh, redevelopment? Well, that's the reason is is because you've got that money, and they and and then two people came in and said, "This is our plan. Sounds good. Let's vet it." And the community develop and the community reinvestment people looked at it and said, "Great, let's go with it." So, but you know, there are people who question and say, "Hey, why isn't this in the town budget? Why are we seeing this being done?" Well, see, those are the questions that 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 should be you know. Yeah, but won't that go to to the? I know that the CPA. You are you are talking about the CP Act, no, that's the, the Community Preservation Act. So, but I know that some people want to get get away from it, right? Because they say that save money for something that we don't really need. Let's go back to the to the budget to the general budget. Yeah, but the problem with that is that this money is already set aside for things like. The redesign so if you don't use it it's not going to go into the town budget it just sits there <laughs> so if you have a group of you have a pot of money and it's just sitting there and it can't be used by the by the town government to you know to supplement um, the budget well why don't you use it and that's what that's the whole point of the uh, uh of uh, the cp um, uh, cpc money and uh, how many nights do you think we will have for segment b I think we're going to have three nights. I think this is going to be a long, drawn out uh, budget meeting. And I think you're going to see an entire night just for the community uh, pr uh, preservation. Uh, I think you're going to see an entire night for uh, schools and then a uh, final night to, to finish up the budget. Yes, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, um, this year, the senior did a prank. Yes, the seniors did a prank. A failed prank, as you should say. Now, um, you know, uh, Beaumont's had a, a little bit of a history of senior pranks. Not so. There are there are some communities like Andover, which has a, a formal prank. You know, the, the the students will come up to the administration and they'll sign off on the prank. That doesn't seem like much of a prank, if you ask me. Uh, but uh, you know, there, there's 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 creative ways of doing pranks which are not malicious or, or vandalism. Um, I, I, and the best pranks always have a theme to them. You know, there's a, there should be some kind of thought put out to, uh, to a prank. So what I mean, was the prank this year? The prank was just taking furniture from out, from outside and just putting it all over the place, basically, you know, putting it outside, uh, put it along the, uh, um, uh, click the pond and into the dry and into the parking lot. And then on the, also onto the roof. Now that's what re that's what really got the attention of uh, Principal Isaac Taylor. He said that's dangerous, and I know that there you know uh, uh, in the next town over, uh, there's a place called MIT where they have the engineering students who do real pranks like putting police cars on top of the Great Dome over at MIT. But I, I think that was they, they were just trying to be you know silly and um, and and you know they should and, and you know I don't even know what the theme would, would have been you know just. Hey, we moved furniture. Well, I can do that. So, you know, it should, it should, it should be thought out and it should be fun. And then, you know, it's like when um, 
somebody tapes, you know, the uh, door doorways, <laughs> tapes the doorways and you can't enter. You know, those are those are fun. Those are those are interesting balloons that, you know, uh, like there was this one cl- class in uh, another place. They put all their watches and they put all their uh, timers to go off at the same time uh, yeah. in all their lockers. So like at eight forty five all the alarms went off and it just, you know, everybody was like, well, what's happening? That's a, that's a good scene to prank. See, this one was a little too dangerous. And there's consequences. I mean, they, they took an event away. Uh, but um, I think they saw that that it wasn't malicious in any way. It wasn't vandalism. You know, they weren't kind of trying to get into the school. So, so the prom and graduation are still underway. So, you know, the seniors will have that. Yeah. So thank you, Franklin. So this was <laughs> News Now with Franklin Tucker, the Uh See you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>